Wanted to do a quick rundown here of what we're putting on our beans for chemicals. Um, first thing we're putting in is a few gallons of the uh, surfactant that I talked about in an earlier video. Basically just neutralizes the, um, neutralizes the water and turns it into soft water so that it doesn't run off the leaves when you spray it. Next thing we're putting in is uh, Roundup or glyphosate. This is our main ingredient here. This is our main killer for the weeds. We have uh, uh, Roundup resistant or uh, glyphosate resistant beans that we plant. So we can spray them with this and it won't kill the beans. It'll kill everything else in the field or at least it used to. We do have some uh, resistant weeds now. Our two main weeds that we have to worry about is uh, giant ragweed and water hemp. Water hemp being the big problem. We've also got lamb's quarters we call them. We've had some issues with that. Um, but they don't grow as fast, they don't get as big, and we've got other stuff to kill them with. Uh, but to take care of the giant ragweed and the water hemp, what we're spraying here is, uh, this is called, it's called Chafin. It's a generic Flexstar, or it's a, a Fomasafin product. If you've ever seen a guy spray his, his beans and then you come back a couple days later and they've got that orange look or kind of a brown, they just, they just don't look that good, chances are he sprayed this on it. We put in a few gallons of this. We don't like doing it. I talked about this in the last video. We don't like doing it, but uh, we've got to nail those weeds. If a water hemp gets away from you, it's got a half a million to a million seeds per plant on it. So we don't want any of those in the fields if we can help it. Next thing we put in is uh, Secure. It's a generic fusillade. Uh, and what we're putting that in the mix for is to uh, kill off our volunteer corn which is corn that uh, didn't get harvested last year. It's kernels that were laying on the ground after we came through with the combine and now they're growing up through our bean field. And we wanna kill that off because uh, first of all, it can rob yield from the soybeans around it. It'll never turn into a good corn plant anyway and it'll rob nutrients and yield from the beans around it. But the biggest reason we wanna kill that off is to prevent bugs from living in the roots or on the plant. So we, we don't want uh, those, those bugs or diseases that, that can live in the corn to be able to carry over to next year because we plan on most of those fields we're gonna be planting corn on next year. So we put that in to clean up the volunteer corn. And the last thing we put in is a few gallons of crop oil. And what that does is it's sort of like a surfactant like I talked about earlier. Uh, the surfactant softens up the water and really helps the chemical or the mix to stick to the leaves of the beans. What the crop oil does is it makes the it makes the spray hotter, we call it, and it basically just keeps the chemical from evaporating off the leaves. So once it sticks on the leaves good with the surfactant, the crop oil really helps helps it stay there and, and stay stuck to that leaf so that it, on a hot sunny day like this, uh, it doesn't dry up and go up into the atmosphere. We want that on that on that plant. So that's what we're mixing up in our tank mix, and remember it's a 1600 gallons or 1600 gallon tank on our sprayer and 90% uh, or more than 90% of that is regular water. That's what those tanks back there are for. It's always just water in those tanks. I just pulled into a field here and I'm about to go spraying. I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a rundown about what we got going on inside the cab here. So this is the computer, it's the same computer that runs the planter, but it's, it's set up differently obviously for spraying. So right now our rate is at 16 gallons per acre. Um, right here it's showing that we've got a fully refilled tank of 1600 gallons. There we've turned our master switch on. This will show our target rate and our actual applied rate, our speed and our nozzle pressure. Um, this will show a map of the field once I get going here This will show where we're spraying over here You can see where there's a boundary around and where we sprayed yesterday. This is to set up all of our auto steer our straight track stuff And this is for setting up our border and our our, uh, our boundaries and that so that's kind of the what that does um, This here is our auto boom We've got it set right now switch it over to manual here but um, we got it set here at 40 inches so it's gonna ride uh, the booms will ride 40 inches above the ground and it will maintain it'll move up and down with the field those booms will move up and down I'll show you that when we get going here but it's got actually got sonar on the booms that little black thing that kind of looks like a hook coming out that'll bounce sound waves off sound waves off the ground and uh, and read the distance from the ground and and uh, it'll maintain the height there. Um, 
this here runs our pump. We turn on the uh, the PTO. It's hard to see the pump there with the three point in the way, but that pump spins and it agitates. Right now, it's agitating the mix in the tank, so it's it's stirring all that up to keep it keep it stirred up, so nothing would settle or or uh, or or remove itself from the water, I guess. Um, and we click on a hydraulic here to run run this. We lift the main cradle up. So it just raises all the booms. And then we hit these buttons here. And that folds the booms out from the main center part. They'll open up a little bit. Then we come over here and we open the main. Once that's out, we raise the centers of them up just a little bit more, and we unfold the outer. This boom is 120 feet wide. There we go, we got it all unfolded. Now we can set it down a little bit. And once we're close, we'll go over here, click the auto button, and the booms will level themselves and find where, where we want them to be. But I'm going across the field now. You can see the chemical coming out. Um, and again, most of it is water, but you can see a little bit of that mist. So we'll have to watch. Uh, once in a while, a nozzle will plug up or something. It'll start spraying a little bit funny. They're pretty easy to fix. If I get one here, I'll, I'll show you guys that, but they just twist on and off of there to put a new nozzle on. Um, and right here, you can see this kind of uh, purple line on the outside edge of the field. That's the boundary that I set. So that goes all the way around the whole field and the sprayer won't turn on on the outside of that boundary. So if I hang a boom out over that boundary, it's not gonna turn on and spray outside of there. So. You're not going to spray the neighbor's field or the road ditch or whatever may be next to the field. Um, where the blue is, that's my coverage. This has got uh, swath control like the planter does. So when it gets to the end of the field and it gets into where that blue already is, it'll shut off the booms. It knows where it's sprayed and where it hasn't. These down here are showing the different spray sections. So if we get off too far to one side, or uh, we're doing some, some crooked end rows or something, it'll turn different sections of the boom on and off because it knows where we sprayed and where we still need to spray. So it'll kind of control that. You can see our nozzle pressure, our acres to the hour, our speed, uh, and how many, how many uh, gallons to the acre we're putting on. So that's kind of that. That's how the sprayer works. And uh, like I say, the auto boom is on, so it does control the boom height um, it's not always perfect if you go through a like a ditch or something or a big washout um, It it will you will have to slow down and you can control it manually here You can turn this off. You can set this for different heights. I already lowered it a little bit I'm set at 36 inches instead of 40 Quick rundown on how the sprayer works uh, This is where we load here. We can load the main tank through here and this, these are the valves to turn it off and on. Uh, if we want to clean the tank out, we want to clean certain chemicals out if we're getting ready to spray a different crop. We can load in here. This is what's called the rinse tank. There's a little tank in the back of the main tank here. Little tank there. That's not part of the big 1600 gallon tank. This is a smaller tank that's just for clean out. And we can put uh, different tank cleaners in there. And then we can turn on, uh, I guess I call it the shower head. But we switch this valve here and then it runs some some high pressure shower heads out of the top of the tank and it it swishes around and, and gets the walls really good inside there so we can clean out the chemicals we want. So that's how the clean out works. Um, back to the sprayer. You can see here that the PTO shaft in the back of the tractor is spinning. So there's a spinning shaft inside here turning this big water pump. Right now it's running agitation control. So it's just circulating all the mix inside of the sprayer. It's circulating that to make sure nothing settles out on the bottom and make sure all the chemicals stay mixed up properly in case you've got something in there that doesn't mix real well. 
it's constantly circulating to make sure that that that's uh, stirring everything up good. Uh, there's some different plumbing and stuff that goes on underneath the sprayer here. I don't need to go through and show you every hose, but the basic idea of it is it gets pumped out the back here through these hoses and it gets uh, sent into the boom here. I'll climb under here and so it comes in here and there's some different valves that work the different sections. Um, so like I said, this is 120 feet uh, and the boom has different sections. I think there's uh, I think there's seven different sections to it. I can't remember without looking at the screen, but it'll shut off 10 or 15 feet at a time, however the sections are set up when you get into that swath control where it's already been sprayed. So the water comes in here in these hoses and it goes through these valves. We got a, a pressure pressure gauge there. Um, there's some screens back here too that we can clean out. There's some finer screens that, that are kind of a like a final screen before it comes out and goes to the boom. These are the nozzles I was talking about yesterday. Um, and we can switch this for spraying different rates of water. Uh, this is the one we use when we're spraying 10 gallons of water normally at the beginning of the year. Right now we're doing 15 gallons of water to the acre. So we'll go with these. They're, they're a blue tip, but it's pretty dirty. But uh, once in a while these will plug up if you get a piece of sand or a piece of grit in there. And in order to get them unplugged, they're really simple. They twist like this. They're a locking deal. They twist off. And you can see the little, uh, the little hole inside there is really small, so it's easy to get plugged. Sometimes you can wash them out right here, but usually we just throw a different one on. We'll throw a new one on and then we'll take this one, we'll take it home and wash it in the sink with some hot soap and water and then blow some pressurized air through it. That'll usually clean it up. Um, usually when we do that, if we're gonna clean it out here, there is a tank right there. That little triangular tank is full of just water so we can wash the chemical off our hands while we're out here. There's 50 or 100 gallons of water in that tank just for fresh water for keeping our hands clean. And that's the basic rundown of how our sprayer works. Alright, it's been about a week now since I sprayed this field and this is what we hope to see. You can, tell, you can see here that the uh, weeds are either dead or they're dying. Um, this is this is dead. There's a little bit of green hanging left in here, but that's dead. Um, on the beans here, this is what I'm talking about where you get kind of that orange color. The leaves get brown, they get a little speckled here. The beans just don't look that great after you spray them for a few days. But these ones, uh, being just a week and we've had good weather, these ones are actually starting to grow out of it. So you can see the top leaves here, they never got any of that chemical on them. These are nice healthy green leaves coming. So we hate to come through and, and burn these beans like this, but for effective weed control, that's kind of our best option right now. This field's looking pretty good. It's pretty clean. The weeds are, are burned out pretty good. Um, I'll cross the line here, and you can see where the neighbors sprayed. They sprayed a little earlier than us. They had some water hemp issues in this field, and they sprayed a little earlier than us. They did hit it with a pretty good shot of Roundup and they also sprayed it with some foam safen or uh, Flexstar generic product. And uh, I'm hoping we don't have the issue they're having here. I talked to them yesterday. I'm not sure what they're gonna do for sure. They'll probably come in here and hit this with some Cobra or something, but you can see here they had a little damage to their beans from the chemicals. Uh, the beans are growing out of it now. But what they're having here is, um, is uh, weeds coming back through here. This water hemp or, or pigweed is, uh, is growing right back through the chemical and it didn't do a super effective job of killing it. Uh, so they're gonna have to hit this with a different product and come back here this week and take care of it so that it doesn't take off because these water hemp plants here have gotten awfully resistant to Roundup, which is becoming a problem in our area. And each one of these plants is about a half million to a million seeds per plant if you let it go to seed. So the last thing you want to do is let this all grow into a million plants and have every one of those go to seed and come hit it with a combine this fall. So that's, that's a little bit about what's going on out here and hopefully you guys learned some stuff about spraying. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook.